Chris Hensley is a registered representative of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member of FINRA, SIPIC, investment advisor representative of Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Houston First Financial Group are not affiliated. The Houston Midtown Chapter of the Society for Financial Awareness presents Money Matters with your host, Christopher Hensley. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Money Matters on KPFT Houston 90.1 FM HD 2. Uh, it is now 11 a.m. Have a great show lined up for you today. If you think about it, many families stress when it comes to budgeting. If you had to relocate every couple of years or so, can you imagine the amount of stress that that would add to the situation of budgeting and keeping your finances in order? Our guest today, Charlene Wild, who is with the uh, American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association, is going to talk with us today about financial considerations for military members facing relocation. So please stay tuned keep listening. We'll do a deep dive into this topic. But if you are a long-term listener, you know that we always have just the first few minutes of the show to kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on when it comes to financial literacy in the Gulf Coast and the Houston area. Now, a lot of times the calendar is short and we may have just one or two things. This week, we actually have quite a few different things going on. For one, uh, KPFT is smack dab in the middle of the summer pledge drive. Uh, that is going on from the 11th to the 26th. So uh, a reminder for listeners who've enjoyed uh, the show over the last four years, uh, it is free. Uh, no charge, but it is listener supported. And so uh, this is that time of the year when KPFT ask for listeners to give. Um, there are a couple different ways that you can do that. You can go to kpft.org and give through the website. Uh, make sure to mention this show. Uh, but we also have a local fundraising event coming up on Sunday. Or let's see, it's on the uh, 22nd, so that is this Sunday. Uh, it's going to be at Fitzgerald's, and it's the Festival of Summer Music and Poetry. All of the proceeds are going to support KPFT. Uh, with that, just a few things, uh, other things that are on the calendar as well. Uh, this week on Monday, I, we had an estate planning seminar out at HISD. Uh, we will be going back there on the 25th for investment basics. Then on Saturday, the 28th, we're doing optional retirement planning. This is free and open to the public. Uh, however, it is a uh, kind of a deep dive into the retirement plan for public educators, uh, people who are part of the state uh, retirement plan, and talk about Social Security, Medicare choices, kind of a little bit about what's going on in the market right now with the volatility and what Fed rate interest interest rate hikes mean uh, to your retirement. And then we will be out on the 31st at SMB Engineering talking about financial basics. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get Charlene on the line here. Charlene, are you there? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on today. My name is Charlene Wild, and um, I'm an assistant secretary here at AFMA. Um, but I'm also a, um, a proud veteran and a military spouse for um, over 16 years. Um, I have um, been there and done that with our family throughout the years, uh, both as a spouse and a veteran. And um, I'm happy to be here today. Well, thank you for for joining. Now, now we had uh, some. Uh, we actually had Mike Meese from from American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association last year, I believe. And so, this is good to kind of get an update with what you know with what's going on there. Uh, but for listeners who aren't familiar with your organization, can you tell us a little bit about the organization? Sure. So, the American Armed Forces Mutual Aid. We've been around for um, over 139 years. Um, we're the longest standing nonprofit. Um, what we offer life insurance, mortgages, investment management um, for military families and their veterans and and their and veterans and only for military. Um, we offer financial goals and planning. Um, and what's 
really amazing is that you know 42% of all of our employees are veterans themselves or military spouses and families. So it's veterans helping veterans be financially successful. And to, and you mentioned earlier that you yourself are a veteran and that you've had to deal with some of these situations such as relocation. And so you're unique, uniquely in a position to to give us some some advice as far as how how does one let's start with that how does one uh, handle a budget when you you've been tasked with having to relocate. <laughs> well, it's it's definitely a learning process um, as. As I was a, when I was in the service myself, that it was pretty easy. It was just myself. Um, but as I, as I was married and we have children, that the first one that we had, we really were kind of clueless on how to save and how to plan and how to move successfully. And so as through the years, we have learned that, you know, we have a, a set um, account that we just save into so that we are prepared for any kind of bumps on the road and prepared for this overhaul of your whole lifestyle every two years. So really kind of having that safety net put aside and that, that um, cash reserve of three to six months of in case something does happen uh, that would kind of throw you off of your budget as well. Absolutely. Those things can really throw you off on your budget. It definitely takes uh, perseverance and planning for the unexpected, as with anything in your life, but especially when you're planning a huge family move, it really does you well to have a savings plan and to stick to it every single month. Because one of the beauties of being able to relocate in the military is that you really have kind of that, that reset button, so you get to restart your financial decisions every couple of years. I mean, the most American families that don't move all the time don't have that amazing opportunity to reset. Constantly. So that's a good way to look at it because you mentioned uh, people, you know, being disciplined about setting, saving, and putting your settings aside. But looking at that, uh, that relocation is a chance to reset, uh, to get focused again back on the savings plan, and really sticking to it and and and, and saving every single month. Tell us a little bit about just the idea. I know one of the things that people. Uh, one of the very first things that people talk about when they're getting their, their financial act together uh, is uh, buying real estate. Uh, how, do you, how do you even approach that if, if it's the, the possibility that you're going to be uh, moving every couple of years or so? Well, there's a lot of factors to consider when, uh, when you are constantly in this moving cycle. Of, you're constantly faced with that decision of, am I going to rent or am I going to buy? Um, which one is it going to be? Which one is most cost effective for me? And as you research into the new housing market, that you have to decide that every single time you move. And so the process of buying that you want to pitch yourself, am I going to be in this area for a long term? Am I, do I see myself settling here after we're out of the military? Do I want to come back here and live forever? And with well, this is a strong rental market. If I do decide to purchase this home, is there a strong rental market outside of just the base? Because just in case that base closes, am I going to be stuck with this home and no one's going to live in it? Or am I forced then to make a decision to move back there? And there, are, thankfully, there's a lot of resources that are there to help you research that area. Because, um, for instance, I know one time I we were living overseas in Korea and we were moving back back to the state side, there was no way that I could take advantage of the, of, the, of the opportunity to come back and do house hunting when I'm overseas. I just wasn't feasible for me. So there are a lot of um, assistance now that can help military families find, do your house search when you're not there. Um, and so those are military-friendly realtors um, that you can find at you know, gomilly.com is a wonderful resource. But as well as um, mortgage, um, part of AFMA, we have a subsidiary that's a mortgage service. And we also have a tab on there for relocation services that are, is an abundant resource to provide um, help for families to do that research. So that's a very real life uh, example there where, where you were in Korea and then it was time to move and it wasn't convenient to be able to, you, you can't necessarily come back to the States just to go house shopping. So. No, 
no, exactly. We had to, uh, we decided to rent in that instance because we just didn't feel comfortable in that housing market not being there on the ground. So we decided to rent first. And, you know, uh, we had a realtor who actually went to the open house for us and with their phone did a live feed through the house for us, took a picture of everything around. So we had a full view of what the house looked like and then made a video of it for us and sent it so we could, it's like we were there with them. I, I love it. The technology, we're really able to uh, to kind of leverage some of our re- resources there that we may not even know existed. <laughs> uh, I know I, I had not heard of this be- before. Um, you, you talked about the idea of, of renting versus buying, and so it just depends on the situation as, as far as what's going to be best for you. But there are resources out there, even if you're overseas. You mentioned um, having a, a, a realtor that's there in the States. Uh, you mentioned a website called GoMilly. Am I saying that right? GoMilly. You, you are. You are correct. And actually, there um, there's a link to that on our um, asthma webpage. But um, I just recently used them as well. And whenever I was for another home, and it was amazing. What they do is they set you up with realtors who are used to working with you abroad uh, when you're not there in person. And so they're quite used to that. Um, and they have. Uh, Scouts who will go out and look for you and do that groundwork for you since you can't be there. So this is a very long acronym, so I'm going to say it. Don't You don't have to write it down now because we'll have it on the podcast notes as well, the website. But uh, for American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association, let me get it out there. <laughs> uh, the website is <laughs> aafmaa.com. And then you mentioned that that, that that link to that website is available there. There's the mortgage services that are, I guess, are going to be very specific. They're going to be kind of plugged into the situation of these mm-hmm. soldiers and of these service people uh, that that know kind of the situation for veterans and, and military spouses even. Can, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about what other resources are available for, for maybe spouses as well uh, who are looking to find employment once there's uh, a relocation? Oh, absolutely. So that's one of the really big factors when planning a relocation is, you know, you're looking at the cost of living in that new area and is my current income, let's say you are one income household, that are we going to have to go to two income to be comfortable and to maintain our current lifestyle? And, you know, military spouses often, you know, that we're stuck in this, um, this cycle of you have a job at one location and then the next location, you know, is like, oh, is it going to be there or is it not? And there's a lot of opportunities for transient um, employment for spouses now. But what if that's not your career field and that's not for you? Um, so thankfully, you know, there's a lot of questions you have to ask as part of your financial planning when you move and just to realize, you know, are you ready for work um, and understanding your job market that you're moving into. And thankfully, you know, many of the major installations now actually have a military spouse employment office that will um, have all the resources for you to help you find that new job. They have job fairs available. Um, as well as resume help if you need it, um, and many face- Facebook pages as well for each installation usually have a military spouse uh, career uh, page that you can go on there and people post um, you know, job opportunities in the area. We we started out talking about budgeting tips, and I and uh, this is something very specific. Can you imagine trying to keep your budget on track, and then the idea of I, I don't know if I'm going to have a paycheck when I move, uh, <laughs> yes. is is part of the equation there. Um, you you talked about the the resources available for those spouses that are looking to to have a new job, uh, that, that to kind of know the job market that they're moving in, uh, but there are resources available to help them do that. Um, and so these are these are unique roadblocks to to families that are really in transition from from the move. Can you tell us a little bit about? What do you think some of the, the biggest roadblocks are for, for service people, uh, service members, family members of, of service members uh, who are uh, trying to keep their financial uh, house in order? What are some of those biggest roadblocks for them? 
Uh, the biggest roadblock, as we, as we just said, was the, you know, some of the insecurity of, of, of income. You know, myself, I was I was a, after I got out of the military, I was a stay at home uh, mom for 11 years and took a big break and then went, joined in the workforce when it was time for us. Um, but financially, it's, you know, something you have to just kind of constantly were, were gauging of, um, sometimes it's by location of how much is going to be coming in, you know, for that time. And will we have um, supplemental income or not? The cost of living, you know, per area is different um, per location. So it's just constantly that reevaluating, and as I said before, constantly resetting your finances uh, per location. So I, I like that idea of, of taking a reset point, and and uh, if you even if you've got a concrete. Uh, financial plan in place. You've got your spending plan. You've got your budget working, um, but then you have to relocate. Uh, taking that as a reset, a positive way to look at it, to to go back to make sure you're doing the things uh, that you that you plan to do, but then to also uh, take these new issues into consideration. Exactly. You know, it's you know a lot of times you know um, it it's all in your mindset, and if you have the positive mindset that this is going to be a positive thing for us. It really bleeds through into everything else. You know, the word, you know, move can cause cringe and it can be a very negative thing. Um, but especially for a military spouse where you're not sure what's happening at each location, you know, the military member, they have, you know, their set job and they know their pay doesn't change each time. They know what they're <laughs> that's coming in. And so that's, a constant revolving door that can be positive or negative. I've I've heard about here here in Texas we've done uh, in in Houston, but more specifically in San Antonio, uh, there's been legislation passed where we've we've kind of taken a stance against payday uh, lenders who will kind of predatory set up around. Uh, military bases and, and target soldiers because they know that they have a consistent paycheck coming in. Have, mm-hmm. Can you speak to that at all? Have you seen that? Um, is that discussed with the American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association? Um, well, we do have, um, we're constantly on alarm for that because we do have, as part of our business, we have life insurance products and, and unfortunately the you know, the unplanned do happen. That's why you have insurance. You get insurance for something you don't really want to happen. But, you know, sometimes it is a younger person, and then we do um, constantly, you know, advise some of our, our young widows that we have that, you know, to, that to be aware. You're getting this all of a sudden, this big influx of insurance money or anything else, and everyone else knows as well. And um, to be aware of that, and so you know, thankfully we do have you know, a wealth management department as well that we can just kind of lend people over to that. But there are, are always predators every single time, and, um, and you're always leery whenever that too good of a deal may really be too good to be true. Absolutely. I mean, that's another thing that that you just mentioned is widows, if they receive a big insurance settlement, just the idea of sudden wealth. Sometimes if, if people aren't prepared for that, uh, it's like handing somebody uh, keys to a car and they don't know how to drive. Uh, exactly. Um, there's exactly. A, there, I think there's a, there's been uh, statistics out there about lottery winners. And if you look back after the first couple of years or so, how what is their quality of life? Um, and, and so really getting the uh, the the help and the education when when something like that happens. Tell us a little bit more about some of the other resources that are available. I'm actually on the website now and I'm looking at some webinars. What what type of topics have you guys covered in the past? Okay, so our um, on we have um, monthly webinars on very different topics. We have. We alternate between our wealth management, our mortgage, and our life uh, of different topics that are would be appealing to everybody. We do cover anywhere from our member benefits, talking about you know, veterans assistance, because um, we have our own uh, VA department um, of things that for um, for mortgage, for moving, what's happening in the market. Um, we have it from 401k investing. Uh, from the wealth management department, 
Um, we try to cover all bases of every aspect of a military life because, once again, we're veterans ourselves, too, and we understand the transient lifestyle and different stages of a veteran um, and military member's life. So right now we have had several webinars uh, just recently about uh, VA benefits and uh, survivor benefits for families, um, life insurance claims, what do you do with that claim? And so those are the kind of topics that we often have in our webinars. So I, I love this because it's very, very specific. A lot of the things that that we touch on when we talk about uh, financial wellness is, are very general. So a lot of the ideas would apply. They're they're very good. But when you're working with soldiers, um, we talk about the you know military pension. Uh, even even the mortgage side, there's the VA benefit. It, it's all very uh, specific. So it's it's nice to have a resource like this where uh, if you have questions, they're they're not their eyes aren't going to glaze over and they won't know what you're talking about. Uh, the, the the people that you guys are talking to are so it's every person that you're seeing are, are, are dealing with the same situation. So this is the right place to ask those questions uh, out there. I'm looking at VA dependent claims, um, five military home buying must do's. That's something that we just talked about <laughs> uh, earlier when it comes to relocating. Um, what other what other tips do you want to let listeners know when it comes to uh, being a service member and in, in, in controlling their finances? Um, well, I I think I heard you correctly. Um, when it comes to finances, any other um, trips, any any last tips for moving? Is that correct? I'm uh, sure that any anything that that would help them, and as far as the finances. So I, I guess the the any other things that I would have to say would be um, for if you're if you are relocating, um, that to make sure that the, everyone is involved in this planning process, um, that you have everyone on board, the whole family, even children. Um, it's amazing to me how much they really do have to say and what they want their voices to be heard. And if you want everyone to be excited about a new relocation, um, you know, you can plan everything together. And to be honest about your budget, what we have, um, and to be honest with everybody, to, to the plan, to be honest, and um and use what resources are completely available to you on that base. Technology is amazing. All of those things are, are really good, uh, and and not leaving out the rest of the family when you have this discussion about uh, about possibly moving, about relocating, uh, sharing that information with the family, the budget. Uh, utilizing those resources that are available to you. Uh, well, we're 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 getting close to the end here. Uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would like to let the listeners know? Um, that, um, that, you know, that um, the AFMA is a wealth of resources. Um, we, and like I said before, we are, you know, veteran-owned and run. Um, and if anyone has any questions about um, just about military life in general, um, I forgot to mention that we do have a spouse link page as well and spouse link is a online forum for military spouses um to op talk openly about different topics um but all of our subsidiaries and all of our off pages can be reached at um asthma.com which i know the link will be on your page and we would love to chat with you there absolutely so that's a great resource for spouses spouse link and it's a forum uh charlene thank you so much for being on the show and and have a great weekend Thank you so much. You do the same. And you have been listening to KPFT Houston. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Money Matters Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, visit us on the web at www.moneymatterspodcast.com. Drop us a line on SpeakPipe on the right-hand corner. Uh, it will receive any voicemails, questions, thoughts, concerns that you have about the show. In addition to this, we recently launched a Patreon campaign. Click on the Donate Now tab to hit the tip jar and find out what Patreon's campaign is all about.